the Sumerian Dumuzid, the shepherd god, called in Babylonian Tammuz, for whom one of the twelve months in the Babylonian and later Hebrew calendars was named, was said to be the great-grandson of An, the sky god, the grandson of both brothers Enki and Enlil, the water and air gods, via both his mother, Ningal, goddess of the marsh reeds, who was the daughter of Enki, with his sister, Ninki Kurga, whose parents were An, the sky god, and Namu, the Sumerian name for Babylonian Tiamat, as well as his father, Nana, in Sumerian, the moon god called Sin, in Semitic, who was the son of Enlil, and his niece, Ninlil, whose parents were Haya, an unknown man, and Nidaba, the muse goddess, whose parents were, in turn, An, the sky god, and Urus, another name for Ki, the earth goddess and chief consort of An. In the Sumerian king's list, Dumuzid is listed as an antediluvian king of the city of Bad Tibera, and also an early king of the city of Uruk. Now, Dumuzid, or Tammuz, was first introduced in a poem called Inanna Prefers the Farmer, which begins with Dumuzid, the shepherd god, attempting to court Inanna, also called Ishtar, the goddess of Venus, who is probably his half-sister, or possibly niece, she being also a daughter of Nana and Ningal, who is also courting Enkimdu, the farmer god. Although Inanna's brother, Shamashutu, the sun god, attempts to persuade Inanna toward marrying Dumuzid, Inanna's heart remains torn between her two lovers, and she cannot decide which one to wed. Dumuzid and Enkimdu eventually argue, with Dumuzid boasting about his prowess, while Enkimdu seeks a calm resolution. The ending is amicable, with the two exchanging gifts. Another poem, Inanna and Bilulu, appears to begin with a lament by Inanna, pining after her husband, Dumuzid, who is in the steppe watching his flocks. Inanna sets out to find him, but, following a large portion of missing text, is told that Dumuzi has been murdered. Inanna discovers that the old bandit woman, Bilulu, and her son, Girgiri, were his killers, and she confronts them at an inn along the road to Eden Lila. Inanna stands atop a bar stool and casts a magical spell, perhaps using one of the sixty sacred me's, or symbols of law that she had crossed the Iabzu to Iridu to return with to Uruk, following tricking Enki, their keeper, out of them by challenging him to a drinking competition. Inanna's spell transforms Bilulu into the water skin that men carry in the desert, forcing her to pour the funerary libations for Dumuzi. Following a confused chronology, the poem's The Most Bitter Cry, Dumuzid's Dream, 
the return of Demuzi, and on his descent into the underworld. Demuzi and Gesh Tinana, his sister, and in the desert by the early grass, collectively roughly outline the following series of events. In The Most Bitter Cry, Demuzid is chased by the seven evil deputies of the netherworld, and, as he is running, he falls into a river. Near an apple tree on the other bank, he is dragged into the underworld, where everything simultaneously exists and non-exists. In Demuzid's Dream, Dumuzi recounts to his sister Geshtinana a dream in which the Gala demons arrive to drag him into the underworld, but he flees, leaving Geshtinana, his sister, to be brutally tortured by them as they try and fail to extract Dumuzi's location from her. An unnamed friend betrays Dumuzi's hiding place to the Gala, and they begin to take him again. But this time, Utu intervenes and magically transforms Dumuzi into a gazelle so he may escape. The return of Dumuzi begins with his sister, Gesh Tinana, his wife, Inanna, and his mother, called here, Surtur, mourning the death of Demuzi, when a fly finally appears and leads Geshtinana and Inanna to find Demuzi. In Inanna's descent into the underworld, Inanna, decked out in her maze, banged on the door of the underworld, demanding to attend the funeral rites of Gugalana, the husband of my elder sister, Erish Kegel. She was then led through seven gates and, one by one, divested of her maze, until finally she came before the throne of her sister, the Queen of Kerr, the Cave of Dead Souls. Inanna then sat in Erish Kegel's throne, an ostentatious gesture, following which the seven Anunnaki, judges of the damned, glared and shouted at her, and thus killed her. Inanna's corpse was then hung on a hook. Sent by Inanna to pray for her release, after three days in Kerr, had she not returned. Inanna's trusted Sukal servant, Ninshuber, did as bade and prayed to Enlil, Nana, Anu, and Inki to rescue Inanna from the underworld. Enki alone relented and sent two sexless figures named Galatura and Kurjara from the dirt under his fingernails to rescue Inanna from Marish Kegel. When these golems arrived in Kur, they found Erish Kegel repentant and eager to allow them to restore Inanna's corpse to life using the food and water of immortality. Inanna is allowed to return to life and leave the underworld, but Gala demons follow her out and insist someone else must take her place. Following her refusal to let them take Ninshubar, her loyal servant, or even the warrior god Shara, Inanna's beautician and apparent son, as recorded in a single building inscription from the Third Dynasty of Ur, 2112, 
until 2004 BC. She allows them to take her husband, Demuzi, finding him not mourning her recent demise, but instead dressed lavishly, resting beneath a tree. Demuzi and Geshtinana begins with demons encouraging Inanna to conquer the underworld. Instead, she hands them over Demuzi. They put his feet, hands, and neck in the stocks and torture him using hot pokers. They strip him naked, do evil to him, and cover his face with his own garment. Finally, Demuzid prays to Utu for help, and Utu transforms Demuzid into a creature that is part eagle and part snake, allowing him to escape back to Geshtinana. The collection of lamentations entitled In the Desert by the Early Grass describes Damu, the dead anointed one, being dragged down to the underworld by demons who blindfold him, tie him up, and forbid him from sleeping. Damu's mother tries to follow him into the underworld, but Damu is now a disembodied spirit lying in the winds, in the lightnings, and in tornadoes. Damu's mother is unable to eat the food or drink the water in the underworld because it is bad. Damu travels along the road of the underworld and meets the ghost of a small child who tells him it is lost, but who then goes off accompanied by the ghost of a musician. Damu asks the spirits to send a message to his mother but they claim they cannot because the living cannot hear the voices of the dead. Damu, however, manages to tell his mother to exhume his corpse and collect his congealed blood, chop it into bits, and give it to his sister, Ameshalama, who is a leech, and who mixes the blood into a brew of beer, which Damu must drink, in order to be restored to life. Damu, however, realizes that he is dead and declares that he is not in the grass which shall grow for his mother again, nor in the waters which will rise. Damu's mother blesses him, and Amishalama dies to join him in the underworld. This last part seems to parallel the description in The Return of Demuzi, wherein Inanna decrees that, from that point onward, Demuzi will spend half of the year with Inanna's sister, Erish Kegel, in the underworld, and the other half of the year in heaven with Inanna, while Gesh Inanna, Demuzi's sister, takes his place in hell. The myth of Inanna and Demuzi later became the basis for the Greek myth of Aphrodite and Adonis. The Greek name Adonis is derived from the Canaanite word Adon, meaning Lord. The plot line also parallels the later Greek legend of Orpheus and Eurydice. Basis in turn for the foible of the star-crossed lover's motif in other works such as Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, and which also inspired Orpheus in the Underworld, an 1858 operetta by Jacques Offenbach. In this myth, Orpheus of Thrace, son of Apollo and the muse Calliope, loved the beautiful Eurydice, from Eurydike, she whose justice extends widely. But she died from a snake bite. Orpheus then traveled to Hades and confronted Pluto and Persephone 
its regions, to petition for his love's life back. Hades told Orpheus that he could take Eurydice with him, but under one condition. Eurydice would follow him while walking out to the light from the caves of the underworld, but he should not look at her before coming out to the light, or else he would lose her forever. Of course, in the last moment, Orpheus doubted their promise, looked back toward Eurydice, and thus lost her soul to the underworld forever. Orpheus tried to return to the underworld, but a man cannot enter the realm of Hades twice while alive. So instead, he prayed in song for death as deliverance until, ultimately, he died, either by being eaten by beasts or else from a lightning bolt thrown down by Zeus.